Here we are today with the main man from Channel 4 SAS. Well, you're all main men, aren't you? Yeah. You're all, you're all a team, aren't you? We're a perfect team. Yeah. And um, you were in, basically, we're with uh, Billy Billingham, and you have been in the SAS for quite some time. Yes, I have, actually. First of all, tell me, in fact, before I ask about your story and stuff like that, mate, yeah. I can remember um, when I was a very young soldier, I was on the command, of course, I did have my green beret and stuff, and they took us away to this place, right? Yeah. This disclosed lo location that nobody knew about. We ended up on a train, right? Okay. And we didn't know what was happening at the time, but we were in a hostage situation, obviously just a, a training thing. So the SAS came in, right? And I was, this, I was really impressed. This was my first impression of the SAS. Obviously, we know about the Iranian embassy and all, all these other different things. And I can remember, they came through the window and the door at exactly the same time and all hell was breaking loose and it was so efficient. I was like, wow, and, and they got us out and stuff like that. So they were really brilliant with their timing. However, this morning, you had a bit of a diva. What <laughs> happened to your timing? Because Billy turned up a little bit late. Times have changed, mate. Right? <laughs> Listen, if you start setting patterns, that's when things go wrong. Exactly. Never take the same route, never set the same time. You've got a flow. I actually went round, we wrecked you first. We wrecked you, make sure you're the right blog and you weren't going to mess us around. Uh, well, have, am I, have I well, come out all right? The truth is, we had an hangover. We had, yeah. <laughs> And you thought, we'll just roll in yeah. whenever, like... Well, Jules so, did, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, so, so today, Jules is in the background. You, how's your head, Jules, right? It's all right. Good, yeah. good, good. So, oh, we're obviously back in the Hard Rock ca uh, Cafe vault room, just the most, I think, in the most amazing location in the UK. You know, so, what do you think? Mate, it's an absolute privilege to be here. I, I don't... No one even knows this is here. It's, no. It's fantastic. It's awesome. I know. Yeah. I'm bringing it out of the closet, oh. mate. How have they let two old squatters into a I, I have like no idea how we're in here. So we've got well, we've got John Lennon's glasses and the Beatles harpsichord and we've got Bob Dylan stuff. Well, you did have. We one did. Got missing. And one's gone missing. The guitar's <laughs> gone. You've got Keith Rett, Richards' stuff there and you've got Freddie Mercury's chair from the Ming Dynasty, mate. Wow. The Ming... Is that is that the same as Ming the Merciless or Flash Gordon? I think it is, mate. I yeah, think it is, mate. It's the same mate. thing, yeah. So it's tell us. Is. You're in school. Yeah. How did school go for you? It didn't go that well, actually. I wasn't very good at school. I, uh, if I'm very honest, I think uh, I virtually left when I was about 13 and a half, 14. I was not a good school kid at all. I used to, I used to play truant or wag it, as we say in the UK. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, quite Mitchin, a lot. I used to call it. Mitchin. Mitchin, yeah, as well. Hiding. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we, I, yeah, I used to. I didn't go very often. I was a little turd at school. I used to. Always wanted to be in the gang. There was like two little gangs at school, and I wanted to be the leader of one. And there was a good friend of mine who probably was his Pete Tolley, great guy. It was like a leader of another one. We, it was just, I don't know, just didn't want to learn anything over them, try and be this, what they call the cock of the school, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think after about 13, 14, I stopped going to school virtually. I'd just go on a, on a Tuesday and on a Friday. And the reason I went on a Tuesday was because I was the captain of the B team football team, and if I didn't go, I wouldn't play. And Friday to be picked for the A team. Oh, it was mainly the subs. So I was never good as those guys, but you yeah. were in the A team, mate. That is how awesome is that? With Beer Barathes. That's it. I used to love that. Yeah. So well, that, that was my school days, and then. Can I ask you though, with yeah. the you know, did you? Because I remember watching the A team, and they used to make uh, rocket launchers out of drain pipes. Could, did you have them skills later on in life? I didn't get them until I got to the regiment. Yeah. I got taught them there. <laughs> so, so you basically you left school, you had nothing. Yeah. So basically, you've achieved so much. How important yeah. is it to do well at school? Because you kind of didn't, Mate, didn't you? Uh, no, I didn't do good at school, and I'm certainly not saying that's the way to go. You've got to do a good schooling, you know. And I'd say to anybody, you know, knuckle down, get your education. Don't don't follow my path. I was lucky, you know, and I think my saving grace was the the military. Um. I always knew I wanted to go in the military, and I tried to get in from the age of 15, half 16, junior leaders, as you know. And uh, I, I, uh, I didn't declare in my medical, I had broke my leg, my femur, and they found out. So that delayed me, and I had to wait for a long time. Got down to London, get this, um, meet this uh, specialist, which was a waste of time. Of course, it was okay. And then, because I was going in the parachute regiment, believe it or not, I was underweight, because I was boxing at a certain weight. So I had to stop training, start putting weight on. 
and I used to have to go over to Wolverhampton careers office every two weeks, get weighed to see I was put, to, to get to a certain weight before I could join the regiment, yeah. parachute regiment that was in 1983. Yeah. And when I joined, I was expecting all these monsters of blokes, and there was blokes skinnier than me when I got there, so I was gutted. So the paras is uh, obviously a fantastic unit. It's yeah. very tough to get it. Not not everybody can get into this unit. Um, there was all sorts of different types of people because you expect this with yeah. these all these commandos and SAS and paras and SPS, and you you just think they're like like that, don't you? Yeah. I tell you what's funny about it, and you'll probably be able to relate to this more because you've done it. Is I don't know what age you joined, but by the time I got, in, I think 16. I was sixteen, and I was yeah. seventeen, and I was looking around, and all these they were men, and yeah. I was a kid. You know, I was looking, <laughs> going, Jesus, big arms, hairy chest, and one of the funny stories I'll always remember is as this little kid, we went into the gym, and there's this monster of a man. Um, it was a Kumasai, sat us all down, and he went, right, how many of you pissed the bed? And I looked around, I looked around and think, what did he just ask? Anyway, looked at him, looked around again. Everyone's got their hand up, but me. And I thought, I must be a freak. I'm the only bloke here, so I just stuck my hand up, pretended I pissed the bed, so I could be one of these men. Yeah. It was just ridiculous, you know. But I was just like looking around at these grown, hard guys and yeah, thinking, you know. So you 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 got your maroon beret. You yeah. uh, you served in the Paris for. I was in the parachute regiment for nine years. Yeah. Um, what part of the Paris? I was in the 3rd Battalion, Parachute Regiment, joined yeah. them in Belize, uh, spent seven years in the battalion and then the last two years I was sent down to the depot as an instructor, so where yeah. it all began, you know. And what made you want to go into the SAS? I'll be very truthful about this, um, a lot of the guys that I was in the Parachute Regiment with um, went on to the regiment and I, I knew I wanted to do it but I didn't know when I wanted to do it. Yeah. They'd gone and I just decided while I was at the Paris, at the depot. I've got to do it. I just want to do to say I could do it and yeah. get with my mates again. So it was uh, around about that time I decided, yeah, I'm going to do it. I, mean, I knew all along, but I just didn't know when. So yeah. that's when I went in the uh, beginning of '92. Yeah, winter '92. And um, so I, I was watched you. Well, we watched it together, didn't we? Yeah. With some of the, with the lads, like uh, the SAS uh, TV show. Yeah. And uh, you're a bit of a nasty fucker, aren't you? <laughs> It's all is, this, is it no. true that you have a nickname of Billy the Bastard? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, it's not true. I I tell you what I like, right? Because I we've already just seen the first bit, right? Yeah. Is um, Moses in the helicopter, and you're basically oh, just geez. he's he's fanning around there. And I I obviously I've interviewed what a great guy. And I uh, you you, ba you basically just said something like just get the fuck out. Well, he wasn't listening to me, <laughs> so I had to get him out there somewhere. Yeah. He was locked on, you know, and he just wasn't listening. Yeah, I've got. To, I kind of lose my temper pretty quick, but yeah, I regain, regain the composure pretty sharpish. But I'm not nasty. No, no, well, I know. Yeah, yeah. Firm and fair. But the thing is, you've got to, you know, you've got to challenge their yeah. mental abilities, haven't you? And there's that lad that was on. You know, he's obviously, you know, he looked like a pretty tough guy. But yeah, yeah. but it's, you know, you sort of, you look for a certain thing in people, and even though they can be quite tough and all of that, mm -hmm. this thing is a different level altogether, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, with that, like the show, with the idea for us, we don't know what those guys, are, anything about their background, those interviews are for us to find out. Yeah. And what we're trying to get into is uh, pushing through the mental barriers and find where the weaknesses are. Weaknesses are. We're happy with your strengths, you can see that, that shines anyway. So we're getting to their weaknesses and push those buttons as far as we possibly can, and that's what happened with that guy, like, you know? Yeah. And going back to Moses, the thing with Moses up there, brilliant guy. I mean, if you think, scared of ice, couldn't swim. Everything we did was about his fears. He did absolutely. And I, if I hadn't have been more aggressive and screaming shout at him, he'd still probably be hanging off that helicopter right now. Yeah. So that was the reasons behind that. But, yeah, so we're getting to, you know, right into their sort of core, peel back the layers and get deep into them and find out what they're really about. I just thought it was quite, uh, I thought it was just brilliant because you had this way about you and then there's Foxy who's sort of like, you know, yeah, no, you, you just smash over <laughs> Keith Richards a guitar. Because you call me nasty. <laughs> Don't call me nasty. I'll have the guitar over my head later on when the cameras are off. <laughs> but then there's sort of Foxy is like, you know, the sort of sort of chilled out. And then there's Ollie is like sort of, Ollie's like a stealth person on there. People are like, what is it with this guy, you know? Yeah. And then Ant as well, you know, he's... Uh, I like, you know, I like the way that he handled the thing oh, in, yeah. in the situation with you as well. It was very good. I but, think we've got a... I think there's a great mixture there. 
of all it's of us. It's brilliant it's because different. you've all got yeah. different personalities. I guess I have a slightly more aggressive, let's just say. Yeah. Slightly more aggressive. Then you got you have got Fox, a big lovable bloke, and he's such a great guy. Yeah. He's he just he just everybody just warms to him anyway, didn't they? Yeah. They'll he tell did. him anything he wants anyway because I like him. Yeah. You got Ant actually. Ant, I mean, he really put it together and held it together. Yeah. You know, like I said, that thing, I, I could have quite easily gone a little bit too far with that. Yeah, yeah. Which I wouldn't have liked to have done, and I certainly didn't want to, of course. It's, it's like, even though he is the sort of, the, the least time experience and stuff like yeah. that, you just work really well. We all bounce off each other. Well, I, and, and I interviewed Chris Akabusi yesterday, and it was a similar thing, right? Yeah. It was basically, um, Roger Black was, was the sort of top guy, um, and then you had Derek Redmond, mm. and then you are John Regis, and then you are Chris Akabusi. And then it was basically... The three guys that were the sort of the the, the kind of the, the stars. Yeah. What had happened was they normally put the best runner on the last leg, don't they, in a four hundred right, yeah. meters? That's right. Yeah. But yeah. because the Americans were winning, they put the the best runner on the first leg, and then Chris Agabusi sort of took the sort of glory run in the end. Um, but how important is it to work as a team and just have that humility you've, with all you've of got you? To. You, have, you really have to work as a team. And I mean, I know the guys, but we'd never work together. We would literally come together for that program. So, although I, I, we'd worked sort of on same operation type stuff, but never really that close. Yeah. And again, we are just totally different characters. But I think there's a great mixture of all of us together to put that. Complete that circle, you know. What it I mean? is. Like every, say, every, yeah, every one of you. Ali's is just, just he's brilliant. Like, Ali's yeah. like the, the the silent sort of. He's like the dad. He's a mystery. He to is, people. Yeah. He's like people. He, he sees it all, and he's like, he, he, and then he just he throws his bit in there, which is always perfect. It's timing. like he's sort of standing back yeah. and sort of people like what, and people <laughs> watching it like, what is that guy thinking? Do you know what I mean? What is he thinking? Because he's like sort of... It's, but it's so cool. I'm the bull in the china shop and he's a bloke that puts it all right at the end, like, you know. Yeah, it's great. It's, but it's a great mixture and it's a great chemistry and I think yeah. that's what we need. Yeah, you know it's, what it's I mean? just... It's, it's, it's fantastic. I think it'd be know. boring if we were all the same sort of people, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what did you find uh, hardest on SAS selection? Or, or, um, or the whole thing, just to get your, your bearings? Yeah. An amazing achievement. Yeah, I mean, the, the eels phase... <coughs> I wasn't worried about. It. I was pretty fit anyway, and I've been at the depot for two years. I've been, you know, yeah, a hell of a lot and, of and paras and commandos yeah. they have uh, yeah, a yeah, good no, success they're rate. They're a good standard anyway. Very generally. good standard. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. paras are a little bit more. No, bit obviously fitter. the commandos are a no, little no, no, bit no. better. Pa para are a little I wouldn't even say a little bit. I'm going to say quite a lot. <laughs> they shout that from a distance normally because we're in front of you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, I'll, whatever. But yeah, so the hills wasn't a big problem to me. I, did, I never had to worry about that. And but I went to the jungle with full sense of security. Because I'd been there yeah. two or three times before, so I thought, yeah, you thought I, I know the jungle. Yeah, I love it. I love the jungle. This was a different thing. I mean, this was like the hills phase, the mountains inside the jungle, you know, so now you're in yeah. a claustrophobic environment. And the thing about the jungle, the psychological side of it is, you never, there's no encouragement or decouragement, de which is a beautiful thing about the regiment. Yeah. The, the, what they're, one of the most biggest qualities of wanting somebody is self motivation. And you know, and I know. Early days of the army, everything you do, you get screamed and shouted at to do your best in the regiment. They don't, they don't, they just ask you, do it, yeah. be there, do it. And the jungle's even more, so they don't tell you. You can either do, do it or you can't. Yeah, you don't know if you're doing well or you do, and you make your little mistakes and you wonder if you've been seen. And generally, you have because you've been watched from all over the place. Yeah. So it's psychological. You psych yourself out. And a little mistake becomes a massive problem, you know, because you're thinking, have I been seen? Oh, God, I've failed. Is it worth carrying on? Because it's horrendous, you know, it's a long old time. And you just, if you want it, it's in your heart, you'll keep going. Even in, And I'll be honest with you, it was so hard. I remember I'd lost about a stone and a half or even more. I was hanging out, you know, it was, I was physically and mentally broke. Not broken, but at my limits. Yeah. And I just kept thinking, to myself, you know what, I don't even care if I pass now. I just need really, to get yeah. to the end of this. Get to it. So that that was horrendous. Then combat survival again. It all has its challenges. It's good fun. You're on the run. It's like being a school kid again, being chased. You know, but then you know if you get caught, you're going to go in the bag, and you don't ever doing that. So it gets a bit serious. And then the interrogation is horrendous. Thirty six hours of stress. Yeah. Oh, mate. Well, coming up soon. I think people. the Marines only do about two hours. Yeah. Anyway. Coming. I well, I was an army commander, so it doesn't make any difference to me. You Plastic say, what? Listen. Listen to me, Pink oh, Bear A-Boy. 
Um, was that, terminology, right? There's a lot of terminology flying around. It's quite difficult for uh, c civilians, you know. They got these different abbreviations yeah. for everything, like you know. And some one of the things that come up the other day was, you know, it's going to VW. Uh, and what does exactly what exactly does that mean? Does that mean they're going to get in their VW camper van and then just drive yeah. around the jungle? Or yeah, what they're going to get a brand new VW8. No, what? it means a voluntary withdraw. It right. means, yeah. you know, like I say, we don't encourage you. We don't tell you you finish your... Well, we do when we're, if you're at that point, but we push you to a yeah. point where you've given it an option to yeah. VW. I can just, you know, put my hand up and say, I don't want to do it no more. And we'll go, okay, great, fine. So VW means voluntary withdrawal. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it gives you the option. And you did, so... Nine years in the parachute regiment, yeah, and, and then, then how long were you in the SAS? Corps? Seventeen, eighteen years in the in the regiment, as you know, as, as a full time. Yeah, sort of went all the way from you know private as a, or trooper as it is up yeah. to sergeant major, which is you know I absolutely loved it. And then I actually then continued in what we call LDET, which is uh, I readiness reserves. Yeah, up until a, a couple, about a year and a half ago, and then to be honest with the reserve stuff, I didn't do a great deal. I just pop in the camp, see the guys, use the gym. Yeah, yeah. If there was anything I could help out with, I did. Yeah, so I had a pretty long career, but it seems like yesterday. Fantastic. Yeah. And then you got out, and basically you turned into Kevin Costner, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One moment you're John Rambo, and the next minute you're Kevin Costner. So yeah. you did a bit of bodyguard work? Well, yeah, one minute you're jumping through windows, the next minute you're carrying bags. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. It is a yeah, bit, yeah. So, I went into the, the uh, security scene, you know, for celebrities and did all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Which was great, you know, I was with the A-list. It was a great experience, great people to work with. Yeah. You know, you meet some fantastic people, the sort of people that you see in this room, yeah? Exactly, my team. I know, I like, I like what you're saying, mate. Come on, bring it in. Bring yeah. it in. Um, I love a story about, so you're with Clint Eastwood, and I love this because Clint said, tell us the story about... Yeah, we were on set, you know, making a, making a film, and uh, a few of the other bodyguards are then. Everybody sort of stereotypes bodyguards, at this V-shaped, six-foot, you know, shades, and, and actually it's not like that at all. And I was on set one day, and there was a, a couple of big guys there as bodyguards with other people, celebrities. I was just leaning like this, just leaning against a post, and he's such a great, humble guy. Mm. And he talks to everybody, you know, from the guy who makes the breakfast up to the to the main actors. And he even spoke to me. So he came over and he's like, and he's, he's that brilliant actor. He goes, "Hey, Billy, <laughs> what do you do?" I was like, you know, great. So I was, and I was, I was like, well, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Jiu Jitsu, karate. What is it?" Because I'm a size, I'm skinny as yeah. to everybody else, like, you know. Yeah. And I went. I think, you know, you do what? I went, I think. He goes, what do you mean? And I goes, I think. I think about the situation. I think about my clients. I think about the, the dangers and all, you know, and I ensure that we don't get into any dangers. We stay yeah. away from it. And he went, I like that. That's good. That's, a yeah. cr that's the that's best you answer do, you know? ever, and mate. I said it to is. you, I am playing easy. Because right? we were talking about <laughs> with Ollie the other day, and Ollie said, I'm stealing that. <laughs> but that's, that's flipping brilliant. What, the accent? Who the, the, the story? I can think. Yeah, I can think. <laughs> yeah, that's he's a Maureen, isn't he? He's a Maureen. He's a Ma <laughs> like yourself, a yeah. Maureen. Don't, don't, t don't put me there. Don't put me there, mate. Listen to me now. I'll listen. Uh, to also, uh, Tom Cruise. You did a bit of stuff with Tom Cruise. Yeah, I did a little bit with Tom Cruise. He was, he was on his show. And period. and a great, a, a great, man. great guy. Lovely. Again, same thing. I met him, and he was like, there was a chemistry there. It's almost like I knew him anyway. Yeah. And. Uh, we worked great together, you know. Told me what what he wanted to do. I told him how I could do it, and we worked together. It was brilliant. Fantastic. Was really nice man. And then, um, obviously, you know, we sort of, you know, you're in the papers and stuff like yeah, that. And, so and and the thing is, it's like papers they spin things, don't they? But we we talk about the the Brad and Angelina, but you you were big. They're fantastic people, you know. They are lovely, lovely, genuine people. Yeah. You know? And it's just a shame that people can't just leave them alone to have their private life. It, it's awful, but. Yeah, I, I don't really want to get into any more comments about them no, right now because no, it, it is, it. it's, it's unfortunate and I, I just wish them the best whatever they do, you know. Yeah. So what's coming up in the show, mate? I can't really reveal too much. But Otherwise you'd have to kill me, you, wouldn't yeah, you, Yeah, I will have to kill you and shred you. Well, that make wouldn't you, be any Make you disappear and let me tell you I ain't a magician. No. All right, so um, there's a lot more excitement. I, mean, I think it left on a kind of a heart-wrenching moment with um, Efron. You know, telling his story and what a great blog. It he kind is. of, I thought it was really. I, I just thought the filming was brilliant. The, all the lads were brilliant, and and when they put that into the equation, it was like. 
Well, let me tell you, if you, if you enjoy that, mate, you're going to really enjoy that. It, it's going to get better and better. Each, each step will take it up another level. But it's brilliant. The the the, uh, the students or the, the you know the candidates are fantastic. They're all they've all got such a diverse story. Every single one of them, from yeah. the guys that stayed one day to the end, they're all great people and got a great story. To, and we, we get it out of them, you know. Yeah. We get the good bits and some of the bad bits as well. But it's fantastic. So the next series, the next one on next Monday, we'll yeah. step it up another level. Different channel, you know, that was kind of art wrenching. This will go a different way, I guess. And then in each one, it's brilliant the way it's put together. Yeah. And you're doing some work with Breakpoint, and I hear that... You I know, am, mate, yeah. You, there's, there's a little run sometimes, and a, yeah. a certain ar army commando is pulling you through the, the two-mile runs and yeah, stuff like I'm, that. They've, they've cut, pulled, pulled me into <laughs> spark up the fitness and carry those two to the next level. Yeah. But Breakpoint, tell us about Breakpoint. Yeah, great, great little company. I mean, they're doing some brilliant things. It's it's the SF sort of challenge they're doing, um, corporate stuff, and also they're getting to the charitable side of stuff, which is great as well. It's it's fantastic, you know. It's uh, we've got some good people coming on the courses. We're trying to raise the level and awareness of the charity side of it. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. we've you know myself, uh, Foxy, and Ollie. We're we're looking to uh, right now. I'm just sort of working something out with them. Um, Possibly going forward, I may join their company as well. I may yeah. join Breakpoint completely. Well, but that we'll would see. be just we'll see. bloody just marvellous, uh, mate. Otherwise, they'll never get to that next level. Well, they won't. Yeah. Well, you have to help them, mate. <laughs> but it will. In all joking aside, it's just a, it's just yeah. a fantastic team. It, it, and it, we've hit it off great. Yeah, but absolutely. And people, yeah. are, are you on Facebook or Twitter or stuff like that? Yes, I'm on all of that now. I don't know what I'm doing on it, but I'm on it. I'm, <laughs> I'm the same on Instagram. I don't know what I'm doing. Like. I think I've got two friends and you're one of them now. Yeah, oh, that's it. And yeah. Ollie's the other one. Yeah. And, and uh, Right, so Billy Billingham. Yeah, not the bastard. It has no, not at all, mate. You're flipping. Yeah. Uh, well, we know each other, and you you are a real genuine nice guy, and uh, Thanks, it's mate. it's really a pleasure to talk to you. And it has been an honour and a pleasure, my friend. Thank, Thank you, you mate. very much. It's always a pleasure. To always me, a mate. pleasure. Thank, Thank you very you much. Guys. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Stay positive and have an awesome week. Take care, guys. Bye. Yeah.